Welcome to season 13 of the Parenting Aces podcast, a proud member of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and this week we have coach Marcin Rospetsky and his wife, Carly, joining us from Inspiration Tennis Academy in South Florida. Super, super excited for y'all to hear about this academy, what their philosophy is for junior tennis development, how they're weeks are structured, how their days are structured, and just basically to hear their story, why they they wanted to get involved in running an academy, and how they integrate personal development, academic development, and tennis development all in one place. It's it's super cool. As part of this podcast, um, Inspiration has generously offered two one-week spots to their summer program for one boy and one girl from the Parenting Aces community. So, Be sure to check the show notes for a link to a form to apply for the contest, to enter the contest, and be considered to win one week, all expenses paid. You are responsible for travel, but inspiration can help with that as well. Um, I hope you'll enter. I hope you'll share your experience with me after you have won and gotten to go there. And for any of you who are just interested in getting more information on Inspiration Tennis Academy, of course, the links will be in the show notes for that as well. One last thing I want to just remind y'all about our upcoming virtual tennis conference for junior players and parents. It's going to be June 9th on Zoom, and our registration form is either, well, I'm not sure if it's going to be out by the time this episode airs, but check the show notes for that as well. We will be pushing out the registration form on all of our socials too. So hope to see you at that conference on June 9th through your computer. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Marcin and Carly Rospetsky. Carly and Marcin, welcome to the Parenting Aces podcast. It's so great to meet y'all finally. We've, We've had online communication and phone communication, but now we get kind of face-to-face. Uh, absolutely. It's nice to meet you too, Lisa. Nice to meet you finally, Lisa. I know you uh, you are famous, so it's, it's <laughs> finally nice to meet you and, and uh, we are humbled to be here. That's great. Uh, well, I'm excited to chat with y'all. I Before we jump into our conversation, I want to just kind of ask you both how you came to tennis, how tennis became part of your life. And Carly, let's start with you. Um, I married him. Uh-huh. That's I, I. I was thinking that might be your answer. I married into it. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm into the tennis family. No, actually, when he met me, he was like, "So I'm a tennis pro," and I'm like, "So?" Like it just. And he's like, "I thought I was so cool." He's like, I, I was, "I'm working right now with this famous player." I'm like, uh, "I don't know who that is." You know, like it just it was nothing. And then I told my parents that I was dating a tennis pro, and they were like, "Oh Lord," you know, so. <laughs> Uh, he changed their mind about them though that's good that's good well so Marson I'm guessing you have a little bit more of a story then (laughs) yes 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 so so I actually have a um I want to call that um almost like an American dream story why because obviously growing up in Poland that's where I'm from I'm from Warsaw um um came to united states when i was 14 on my own the reason why i left poland there was not much going on in poland i was okay junior uh started playing tennis i was seven years old you know it was either soccer or tennis Uh, my parents didn't know anything about sports um they were not unbelievable athletes but they knew that i was athletic and i was fast and i they needed to do something with me because i was just too much energy in the house. So um, it was either, either tennis or soccer. So tennis was very different back in Poland. You know, we all always had to wear white, um, short shorts. So so people were looking at us very differently, but I liked that. I, I was I was the uh, kind of an original kid. So, so anyway, um, I, but I had to leave Poland. You know, at the age of 14, I was getting pretty good and there was nothing going on in Poland as far as high performance tennis. So I left, and as a matter of fact, I came to Florida um, on my own, by myself, with a little bit of money, uh, with no English at all. 
And uh, just through experience and some connections, my parents' connections, I was able to meet with a Polish family that would sponsor me. And I stayed with them for a year, um, started to obviously playing a lot more tennis. And then they all of a sudden told me that they don't have money and, and, and they cannot take care of me anymore. So they would send me to Chicago, play tennis over there, obviously, with another Polish family. Uh, fast forward, I was basically broke and with no kind of any idea of what am I going to do next. I called Dennis Vandermeer and and I said, well, we have a great program over here for a international students that are pretty good. At that time, I was about 50 in the world in on ITF uh, as a junior and they gave me a full scholarship. So I was there for about three or four years. That was my base. Um, started training with Marcus Andruska, with Amanda Kotzer, with all the South Africans because of obviously uh, Dennis Vandermeer from South Africa. Um, I qualified for Polish Davis Cup, won the Polish Nationals at 1994 when I was 18. Uh, traveled to Nigeria, traveled all over the, the, the world. Um, I was about 300 in the world um, on ATP um, and got malaria, went to Nigeria, got malaria, got sick, came back to Poland, spent about three months in Poland in a Polish hospital, which I was probably the second or third person ever in the whole history of Poland that had malaria. And one of the wow. first people to survive it. Really? So, yeah. Because wow. it it, like now they have a cure, but back then they didn't. So, yeah, so um, after the hospital, you know, and again, this was when I had sponsors and flying everywhere and playing professional tennis. This is what I wanted. That was my dream. Had an incredible base at Vandermeer's, you know, won the Polish Nationals. Uh, but because of this malaria, I lost the sponsors. I lost all the connections. Uh, I realized that there is a social life outside of tennis uh, so so I had to do something I, I called Dennis and I said Dennis I need your help um, and you guys had an incredible relationship yeah Dennis was incredible Dennis and Pat Vandermeer incredible incredible people um, believed in me you know mm -hmm. they, they saw something in me that that uh, that they trusted me so I called him and I said listen I think I'm still good enough to go to a four-year university here in the United States um, I'm wasting myself in, in Poland, but I know that you can help me. You have enough connections. So he called uh, Mr. DeMars, uh, head coach in Columbia, South Carolina. And he said, absolutely, we would love to have you. Just give me your high school diploma. And I said, what? I never went to high school. What are you talking about? I am 21 years old, professional tennis player without any kind of diploma, without any kind of education. He said, well. Which we don't recommend. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that at our um, but he said you need you need to go to junior college and I said okay well I have no money so I need to have a junior college with uh, either some kind of scholarship but I know junior colleges don't do that so he said well two of the best junior college is in the United States is Taylor Texas and College of the Desert in California coached by Guy Fritz Taylor's Fritz uh, father yeah. I said, I want to go to, te uh, to Texas. I'm sorry. I've never been to California. So I went to California and then, and then it's history. I met Guy Fritz and um, we had an incredible, incredible um, career uh, with, with him and then went to UCLA. I went played two years of junior college. Then I played for UCLA and, uh, and the rest and, is history. And, and <laughs> that's, that's about it, you know, and obviously uh, coached a lot of great tennis players, Azarenka, Anna Ivanovic, uh, Jeannie Bouchard, a lot of a lot of the girls I've been around of uh, uh, a lot of the, the the professional tennis players, and that's where I get a lot of the knowledge, a lot of the experience, and things like this. So um, I'm grateful that that I've been around and I've learned a lot from these famous famous uh, coaches, you know, Sven Gronefeld and with Adidas and all these guys. So uh, fortunate, fortunate to be to be around them. And how did you decide after being at UCLA that coaching was the right next step for you? Um, you know, 
I didn't know, but I knew that I loved helping people. I loved giving my knowledge, my experience through a simple way, through a simple, very, because I'm a simple guy. I mean, I, she is the brain. I'm just a workhorse over here. I, I just give me, give me something to do. Tell me and, and I will do it. So that's my philosophy. I will explain it to anybody how to play tennis and, and things like this in a very simple way. I try to, if I understand that, you must understand it as well. So, so, but I knew that I needed, I wanted to help people. I wanted to, I'm energetic. I have a lot of enthusiasm. I love this game. I have tons of passion for this game. And if I can help and change the life of this young girl, young boy, 1%, 2%, my life is good. I love that. I love that. And so now you guys are back in Florida um, running Inspiration Tennis Academy. Tell us a little bit about the academy, the philosophy of the academy, and the ages and levels of players that y'all work with. Yeah, so as far as levels and ages, we have kids that are from one or two UTR all the way to 13 UTR. And about nine eight maybe but nine's our youngest and then it goes up to 23 24 because yeah. we have uh professional players with us as well so so it, it's it's a huge variety of kids of 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 players and levels and things like that uh which is a challenge but but we love it we learn from the kids you know um they are being honest and they tell us exactly how it is and <laughs> and we tell them exactly how it is yeah. Because obviously they need to hear it and the, and the parents need to hear it. But, um, but yeah, no, our philosophy, my philosophy, number one is character and heart. That's the biggest thing for me. You know, um, if you have a, a, a good character, that's, that's half of the battle. Um, we have three kids, three boys, and I told them, all of them, I need you guys to play sports. I need you to be passionate about something. The sports will help you go through this unfair life that we have over here. So for, for the kids, for our kids to, to play tennis, it, 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 teach them how to obviously have a, uh, a work, ethic. work ethic. Absolutely. To be honest, to be respectful, to be to be accountable, to me, that's number one. Um, so character we, and heart. We carry that into the academy. You know, mm -hmm. that's how we've raised our kids. I think we've got pretty good kids. Um, and we're with these athletes sometimes more than their own parents get to be with them. You know, if if they're starting with us at seven in the morning and, and leaving at four, you know, five thirty, six o'clock at night, they go home, they eat dinner, they shower, they go to bed. So we really they go homework. They do homework, but they have they have the academy to to do their schoolwork in. Um, but we take that responsibility on knowing that we do have these kids more and they need to still be guided and taught and structured and um we're helping their parents kind of raise them in a sense. We take that on. They're not just a number to us. They're not just someone else's kids. Lisa, know? that's that's the biggest thing. We care. We care for them. We care like it's our own kid because because their our kid is there. So I know how important it is for the parents mm -hmm. to leave their kid there. I hope she's okay. I hope he's okay. And yeah. they are because all of our staff is it's all about care it's all about taking care of the kids we know them we are not a big tennis academy so we all know each other it's almost like a family over there so so uh and by taking care of them it's not always happy and nice sometimes it's discipline sometimes it's um they're picking weeds because they've had a bad attitude <laughs> um and we let the parents know that when they come we're like look if your kid's not behaving where there's going to be consequences and and if they continue to not behave or respect our philosophies or if they're disrespecting players they don't get to stay which is you know it's hard for some parents to fathom that but it only takes one kid to ruin the environment 
Um, so, you know, obviously if they cut, if they are having issues, we try to talk to them, mentor them, get to the root of it with love. with love. But if it's something that we just can't seem to get through, then, you know, then they're not for us and, and we're not for them. So, and, but, and obviously I, I don't want to take too much time over here on that subject, but, but there are more details, you know, like I said, character, number one, um, athletic ability, number two, because again, if you create a big time athlete it's so much easier than to teach them tennis and to teach them forehand and backhand that that's an easy part character athletic ability mental toughness you know uh, uh how to fight my demons and then also somebody else on the other side so so that's that's another big part uh technique and footwork it's it's down the line it's a little bit easier but obviously we focus on that tremendously overload training we have realized, I have realized that tennis is so physical right now. Yeah. Tennis just running side to side. I mean, you know, we have a 14 year old son that that uh, we talked a little bit about this, that that he's in a small frame right now playing against a 16 year old man almost like these yeah. guys are six to my size you know, 180 pounds and, and our boy is... And they've got like mustaches. You're like, you're 14. <laughs> this is crazy, yeah. you know? So yeah. that, that 14 age bracket is such a, a strange... It's probably the worst, the hardest uh, age, age division difference. to be in. Yeah. Um, so you have to keep, you know, strength, athletic ability. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Being physical, being athletic, being fast. So, so just fundamentals like this, you know? And then obviously strategy and tactics, absolutely. And then um, tournament scheduling, planning, and things like this. So, so as far as philosophy, heart, character is uh, is on the bottom of that uh, of our uh, pyramid. That's a, that's like, our base. Yeah. That's yeah. Our foundation. Yeah, I love that. And and we're going to, you shared a graphic with me that I'll have in the show notes that kind of outlines this, which I think is really beautiful. And um, so I want to encourage everybody to check the show notes for that. Um, I wanted to ask you, so how many students do you typically have at a time with how many courts and how many coaches? You want me to get, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I handle that part. That's my You're job. the business person. I'm yes, I understand. Person. I'm a, Okay. So we pride on ourselves on keeping a very low athlete to coach ratio. Um, that's also because we are a nonprofit. So we're not pushed to just be a machine, a factory of tennis players. Um, so we try to keep it four to one ratio. Um, so even like our summer program right now, we have uh, promotions going because we're trying to see how many coaches will have to bring extra for the summer. Um, so we're trying to get it all filled up by May, uh, just because we don't want to have eight kids and one coach, you know, that's, that's not, that's a clinic, right. Mm -hmm. at that point. So, um, we try to keep a, a four to one ratio at all times. We have eight courts, uh, available to us. So nice. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Um, and so what does a typical day look like for a player at Inspiration Tennis Academy? So um, seven o'clock right now, we have training from seven o'clock till 10 o'clock. Uh, when you are there at 6.55, you're not coming in because you are late. So, so I am, I, and the kids don't like me at all because uh, we are doing, we are obviously having teenagers over there. And then the teenagers at seven o'clock, you can't even talk to them. So but but they know how uh, important it is to me to be there 15 10 minutes before so our program is 7 to 10 and then kids go to school either online or physically going to our um, school at uh, on campus and then they come back and it's 3 to 5 30 sometimes 5 45 most likely i go over all the time so somewhere around six o'clock we are done Okay. Um, so is it all, is it all hitting tennis balls from seven to 10 and three to five 45 or is fitness footwork mental? Where does all that fit in? Yeah, no, good question. So from seven to seven, 15, seven, 20, we do warm up our, just a regular, uh, uh tennis warm up, things like mm -hmm. this. And, 
And I want to stress out that every single day, it's a little bit different, either a jump rope or dumbbells or a, um, a ladder or speed ladder or ball agility or, or a, a med ball. But it's a, it's a quick little 15, 20 minute warm up as far as your, your footwork. Then we go on 7.30 to 9.30 tennis. My philosophy is four hours of tennis per day. Okay. So the first thing in the morning, 7.30 to 9.30, it's a lot of hitting, a lot of patterns, a lot of live ball, a lot of consistency. Today, for example, it was a windy day. So we did a lot of, I started talking to them about, listen, guys, I know you guys hate the wind, but this is not what we are going to bring on a tennis court. I need you guys to embrace it. I need you guys to be mentally tougher. I need you guys to use that wind as your coach, as your doubles partner, as your teammate. Why? Because this person on the other side is going to hate that wind a lot more. So things like this. So today, windy day, we worked a lot on making the point a lot shorter, uh, surf plus one, surf plus two. So themes, a lot of themes around the morning hitting tennis balls, either consistency, you know, or we talk about height over the net. We have net zones that will make sure that we hit that much higher um, arch over the net, things like that. We are done at 930 and that's pretty much every morning. We're done at 930. We go to the gym. Okay. Uh, we have a gym every single day from 930 to 1015, 10 o'clock. Come back, either kids go to school, online, like I said, or physical. We come back at three o'clock. Three to four, it's fitness. On the court, fitness, either bungee cords or a blaze pods, reactive um, uh, movement, uh, plyometrics, jumps, uh, speed, agility. We try to really focus and really push them really hard, Lisa, for that first hour when they are a little bit fresh, yeah. you know, because obviously we tried at the end of the practice and they were just dead. Yeah. We couldn't get anything out of them. Um, so from three to four, it's fitness. From four to six, 5.30, 5.45, again, a lot of hitting. Um, now we focus a little bit more on strategy, tactics, uh, point situation, obviously, um, drilling, uh, ball machine. We get this, just got this incredible ball machine. Uh, it's a, it's a serving tower serves about 150 miles an hour serves, which I've been told that, you know, we are the only, or maybe only second or third Academy here in F South Florida that doing that, which to me is mind blowing. Why would coaches don't not use that a lot more? Yeah. So anyway, obviously um, we're not hitting 120 mile an hour serves at our little guys, but <laughs> uh, yes, we are. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have told the story on this podcast many times about when my son was nine years old at camp at university of Georgia. And the last day of camp, John Isner, who was still on the team at Georgia came out and the kids got to try and return his serve. So how exciting you know, is that, right? It was the highlight of his yeah. year, you know? Yeah, no, I know. Carly is always, you know, safety first, Marcin. I, yeah. I get it, but <laughs> so so um, that's pretty much pretty much every day. Now, Wednesday okay. is a little bit different because we have philosophy of, okay, Monday, we're going to do a little bit more of speed. It's the beginning of the week. Kids have some time off. Some of them are taking Mondays off because of the tournament, mm -hmm. uh, tournaments on the weekends. We encourage that if they've played a tournament and they've played hard, they need to have rest and downtime. Yeah. Sometimes Good. parents are like, go, go, go. And we're like, no, <laughs> they yeah. need to rest. We don't want them to burn out. We don't want them to have injury. They need to re recoup all the calories they burned the electrolytes they've lost. So that Smart. is, that is very much a part of being in this Academy is making sure that the families, the kids, the parents understand, you know, how to do this. A professional tennis player doesn't do that. Why should our children? So, yeah. Love that. You know, so everything is thought out pretty, 
pretty detailed um you know so like i said monday it's a little bit more speed tuesday we're going a little bit more speed endurance wednesday Not, well tuesday is a special day though tuesdays and thursdays correct tuesday we focused a lot more on one coach two players on one court it's a lot more individual okay. you know a lot of the tennis academies is is in this uh, group sessions uh, academy setup where you know, one coach, eight guys, okay, we're going forehand, cross court, back and down the line, step in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're trying to do things a little bit differently on Tuesday and Thursday. One coach, two players, and we just go at it 100% intense for two hours, very little downtime. Coach, can I take a water break? You have 45 seconds to take a water break. Let's go again because... We don't waste time on those days where you are with one coach and it's your time. You need to fix your cavities over there with the forehand and backhand and things like that. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, we do a lot of overload training, which is tons of running. One mile run, 5K run, sprints, 400 uh, uh, um, uh, meter sprints. A lot, a lot of sprints. We have a, a we lot found of... the one mountain in Florida. Yes. For, it's a hill, <laughs> celery hill for them to climb. And then also a lot of beach runs when the weather is beautiful. The kids love that. And then they get to jump in the ocean afterwards and nice. go off and hang out. So, cause we're very big on, um, yes, we train them hard. Yes. They're, they're exhausted and they are focused and dedicated and not everybody there wants D1 college or to go pro, but a lot of those kids have that aspiration. Why not them if you're willing to work hard enough? But you also have to do things that kind of refill your cup, right? Yeah. So we have a lot of beach moments yeah. and yeah. trips. We, we train the, hard. Trips to the river, float yeah. down the river, stuff like that as a group. Love that. Yeah, but but uh, Wednesdays. If Wednesday is the tough toughest day. day. Wednesday is the toughest day. So whenever we have visitors. We tell them, don't come on Wednesday because you're going to be sore <laughs> on Thursday. Back. You never come back. <laughs> you come back if your first day is Wednesday. Uh, so, so yeah. But their tournaments because we want the kids to be able to, to train. If you got to the finals, the semifinals, you're probably exhausted. Yes. So, you know, you need to learn how to push through that uh, in those moments. You need to find your grit. Yeah. Um, and, and that type of overload training is where the kids find the grit and the willpower to keep going. Yeah, so Thursday we slow down a little bit. It's a lot more stretching, a lot more um, mo uh, points situation. Obviously, we still do fitness, absolutely. And then Friday we have a morning session only mm -hmm. for a specific reason. A lot more matches, a lot more UTR match plays, but afternoon off. Kids are traveling to the tournaments. Kids need to rest a little bit and and um getting themselves ready for or maybe catch up on schoolwork yeah. you know it get, it, we give them that time to just do what they need Good. to do yeah. yeah so so that's pretty much pretty much it you know obviously we have tuesday and thursday we have mental toughness uh on friday on monday and friday some of the kids do mentorship which mm -hmm. i think Harley will touch up a little bit on it look lisa we the, the biggest difference that I see in other academies is that me as a director, I have an obligation to the parents because obviously they are paying, they, mm -hmm. that they are giving their children to us. And some of them are making huge sacrifices. Not everyone who's, at, you know, we have some kids on scholarship, of course, but you know, some parents are giving everything they have to give their kids this opportunity we're aware of that. We're those parents, you know, yeah. that are, are doing that right now with our son. So, so, so we I have want an to, obligation. Absolutely. I want to cover pretty much everything from the tennis, from fitness, from strength, from mental toughness, from um, uh, tournament planning, from stroke um, uh, um, proactivity, from swing vision, from mentoring them. You know, putting arms around them and go, hey, I see that you are struggling today. Tell me what's going on. Talk mm -hmm. to me. I, I, are you burnt out? Are you, uh, is your sibling bothering you? Is, are you not, you know, you, I noticed that your UTR is not going up. Is that what the matter is? You know, just 
just really level with them instead of just coaches and, and yelling and screaming. No, we want to have the relationship with them. That's to me, that's number one thing. Mm-hmm. But we cover all the other bases because, because. And with their parents too, you know. That's well, and that's what I was going to ask you, like where do the parents fit in to the process? Because the kids aren't boarding with you. They're just there during the daytime hours yeah, correct? Boarding with us um, okay the, just to cover boarding we don't have a we had a uh a, a boarding house um but now it's only postgrads that can stay in it because we find that the kids that are younger they still need someone to watch over them they still oh, yeah. need <laughs> discipline they still need someone to say hey turn that phone off it's, it's, I tell them it turns their brains to mush. Um, you know, I, I give, a, I'm in social media marketing background. So I give them lectures about what everything's doing to them and, and all that. Kind <laughs> of thing. They, they still need that. So yeah. if you are boarding, we place you with one of the coaches. Um, most likely if you know, you're a boy, then you're going to live with other boys. If you're a girl, you're going to live with the girl families. And then, um, if your siblings, you can stay together. Of course, right now I have a triple decker bunk bed in one room. I have, uh, a double in another room. And then my son has, uh, his room, but then he also has a, a pull out for other kids. And during orange bowl, Eddie, her summertime, the house was full of boys. It's, it's a Lisa, crazy I'm, I'm so time. sorry. Do you, do you see the, the background over there? What's going yes. on? We have a pool that has a little boat in. I see that. Exactly. That's our kids. And that's a real boat, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a, they it's a tennis to, house. <laughs> yeah. They wanted to be in the boat, in the pool, and we just let them do it. It's, it's not going to hurt anything, but yeah. Um, uh it, the weather was <laughs> conducive at the bay Where are the parents the parents are involved um so to, so yes we do have kids boarding with us they stay with us they stay with coaches and we try to manage the boarding kids schedules by putting them in similar situations so that if you are a boy who's in the 14 division you're traveling with that family that also helps cover the cost it cost shares um right. so that's one of the things we try to do the parents are involved. We have a very intense uh, plan, the, the development plan, right? And, so, and that's something the coaches put together every three to four months for a player. So the parents are getting that. Um, the, the, uh, we also have meetings every two to three months. We call them, uh, you know, like family meetings or mm-hmm. uh, everyone gets together. We have pasta and we go through what's happening at the academy and the events that are coming up, or maybe the kids' diets need to change. And we talk to the parents about that type of stuff, answer questions about future tournaments and 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 stuff like that. So parents but are very involved. The, the biggest thing is whenever I do the developmental plan and I sit down with coaches and the player. There and is, the parents. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, the parents have a big role in this. Why? Mm-hmm. Because obviously they're not the coaches. They let them be the parents and and help them navigate, help this this player navigate through their everyday life. Like Carly said, help them go to sleep at a certain time. Help them make sure that they are on time. Help them make sure that their strings, the rackets, all that is taken care of. Especially when we, because most of the time we deal with kids that are uh, under 18 years of age and, and they still need to be picked up and, and, and taken care of. So um it's a it's a big commitment from three groups of people parents players and the coaches um thank goodness that we are small and it's taken care of uh, uh very easily mm-hmm. and we never plan to get gigantic because then we would lose that part yeah. if we did and we don't want to do that um, but it is it's it's we tell the parents there's only so much we can do we do a lot at the academy but when they go home to you at night, turn the Wi-Fi off. You know, yeah. if it's not on, they can't play them with their phones until 11 o'clock. So, yeah. 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 I want, you mentioned that the Academy is a nonprofit. Um, so how, how are you funded? I, I understand you offer scholarships. Where does that come from? Obviously uh, you have families that are paying, but that doesn't cover 
everything. Everything. No, we are a nonprofit uh, academy. We are a Christian faith-based academy, but everybody is welcomed at our academy. We have kids from all religions. We have coaches from all religions, uh, but we are a nonprofit. Um, so we have a, a brick and mortar school academy and it's got about 250 kids. Um, I will tennis players or no, no, no. There's baseball players, lacrosse pick players. And then we have kids that are in the arts, performing arts, dance, mm-hmm. we have dance academy or non-athlete. or non-athlete or, you know, type of thing. So it's, it's all different kids. Um, so it's a big school. It's not just a tennis academy, which is great because then we can help international kids come in and they can get their student visa through us, which is a nice thing to offer. Um, we also have the brick and mortar school, the flex school, which is part-time in-person, part-time virtual. And then if you are really studious and dedicated, you can do virtual uh, uh, schooling, but you still have to go through the mentorship program and you have to be very much a part of the school itself. So the virtual schooling is actually done in the school, not necessarily at home. Um, so money comes in that way. We have families tennis families that donate. Um, We have alumni who have had a lot of success and their families will donate. Uh, We have grants that we get. Um, We have, you know, parents are paying, but some parents come with a need. You know, they they Mm -hmm. say to us, uh, look, this is how much we can afford. We just, tennis is expensive. And I'm sure everyone who's watching that This video right now is shaking their head like, yes, none of us knew what we were getting ourselves into, right? Yeah. So we try try to work with everybody. We try to work with everybody. Um, And so if someone comes with us with a need that they need help, we reach out to our community, uh, you know, and just say, hey, we have a great player. They have great work ethic, great character. They want to, they want this. Mm -hmm you know, and, and people will provide in. And so that's the wonderful thing. They will work together. Um, the other thing we do is try to schedule tournaments together so that we can cost share the travel expenses as well. Like we're planning on going to an ITF in Jamaica. And so we're going to do that as an academy so that we can cost share the travel expenses with that. Um, but yeah, that's where the nonprofit comes in. Um, we also have an ambassadorship program. So kids, who need scholarship or need help with other expenses, they can spread the word about their academy. A lot of times someone will walk up and say, hey, I've seen the Inspiration Academy before. Tell me about your your academy. And, and they can do it, do it that way or they do it through Swing Vision even mm-hmm. um, by sharing the Swing Vision video and say, hey, do you mind if we record this match? And then this is how you would watch the video. Um, and then they learn more about Inspiration Academy. And when the kids do that, when they help us promote it and because they love their academy, this is their home, they're willing to go and share it. And then they can also earn like free private lessons that way because not everybody cool. can afford that yeah. you know and and stuff like that so but but uh, you know i had I, like i shared with you before my career was up and down and i was all over the place but i remember being one of those kids you know being in somebody's home without any kind of money without any kind of goal wh- wh- what's going to happen to me yeah and I know how I felt and I know how these kids feel now. So we, I try to pay it forward. We try to do the same thing for them. We try to help them because we know how difficult it is and it can be. Dennis Vandermeer helped me, you know, and Pat Vandermeer helped me. So we try to help the same way. Yeah. You know, we, we obviously have incredible staff. Um, I'm sure, you know, Colin and Teo Davidoff is with us that, that are incredible people. Um, and they try to help as well. We really have coaches that that care, that that want to help, and and it and it shows, and it kind of trickles down, you know. Uh, so so I feel like our kids are, I call them a small little army of of tennis players that when when they improve and and rise together, you can feel it that it's a that it's a beautiful it's, thing. It's so, definitely a rise and rise other mentality, you know. Yeah. yeah. They compete against each other it gets heated sometimes especially <laughs> when they're trying to get onto a higher court or something like that but they're so good at 
just supporting Help, yeah. each other, loving mm-hmm. each other. If you're one of the younger players and you got up on the other court, it's high fives and and no bad attitudes. And they know it's not going to fly if they if they try to try to be different. And then we also have two professional players training with us. Um, they are helping the younger teams. ones as well. Yes. Oh wow! Because they know they've been there too. They're from Bulgaria. Uh, Lia Karazancheva and and Dian Nedev and they are great people. Uh, uh, Lia is uh, playing Federation Cup right now for Bulgaria. Uh, she's overseas. She just texted me, Coach. I'm so glad that I I've been training with you guys and and now I'm playing a Fed Cup. Anyway, long story short. Um, yeah, so we have them kids, and they, kids they have help, a lot of love. They help them out, and when you have good role models like that on the court as players, mm-hmm. that also helps the situation. Um, I want and- you to talk about your mentor program real quick. Sure. Um, cause we're, I, I I'm looking at the time. clock. I'm like, Oh my gosh, Oh my gosh, this hour is going yes. way too quick. So, so we have a mentorship program. Um, it, there's different ways of doing it. If you go to the Academy, whether it is through uh, homeschooling or virtual schooling, uh, the flex program or in person, the mentorship program is included in that. I think it's really important that and one of the things I love is if you do virtual schooling through the academy, you're still a part of the mentorship program. You're still uh, you still have counselors. You still get the diploma. You still get to go to school dances and all the school functions because I know these kids are working really hard, but we don't want them to lose their childhood either. Mm-hmm. So I love that we have that and our mentorship program basically is six girls to one two female mentors or six boys to two male mentors and we hang out together um it's for an hour hour and a half and sometimes I will bring like crafts to do with the girls and we're talking high school students they have they love it though the girls still love it and the reason I do that is because it sometimes it's coloring sometimes it's making a easter egg um, but it's a, a way to give them something to do. And then they start opening up and talking about maybe some of the peer pressure they're feeling or some pressure at home or their grades are slipping and, and everyone just kind of comes together, supports each other, gives us some insight about what's happening in their lives. Because a lot of times when they are acting up on the court, it has nothing to do with tennis. It yeah. could be something else. So it, uh, the last thing they need is someone screaming and yelling at them. Why aren't you, why can't you hit a ball? Why is everything going out when they really need someone to say, Hey, are you okay? Yeah. Um, and so the mentorship program helps us with that. And I think it also helps uh, keeping the kids kind of grounded and kids and, and being a part of a community. So, and then, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we talk about a lot of times in my groups, we talk about business part mm-hmm. of, you know, these kids are 16, 17 years old. And, and a lot of times the school or the parents or whoever is, is really not talking about that. So so we're talking about that. We're talking about, um, you know, values of a man. These days, those values are a little bit strange. And so 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 we, we just talk about life. Mm-hmm. Uh, being a tennis player is just... What we do. Exactly. Yeah. Not it's, who it's, we are. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so this is some some real st- real life stuff that that the kids are really they want to know, and they and yeah. they have questions, and and sometimes we're just playing pickleball, or sometimes we're playing soccer, and we're not talking at all. It's just an outlet, something else to do, yeah. um, you know. And and you bond with them. I mean, I had my men- my mentees, the girls were calling me during spring break because some of them were away and they're like, I'm just calling to see how your spring break's going. And of course we don't really get one, but, but I just love that, you know, that you build that connection with them and it helps because yes, I, we train hard. We are pushing these kids. It is, they are, you know, but you still need to care. You still yeah. need to tap into who they are as a person. And, and I'm sure if you talk to any professional coach, they're going to tell you their coach is amazing because they listen to me because yeah. connected because to a me, relationship, yeah. you know, there's a, we have a relationship. So, yeah. and we have that with the families too, the moms, the dads, uh, are, we all hang out and talk and, and support each other and laugh and yeah. So that's that's good great. Thing. 
Before we wind up our hour, I want to talk about the scholarship, well, not the scholarship, the contest that we're going to be offering to one girl and one boy to win a week to train at Inspiration Tennis Academy. I'm super excited and super grateful to you guys for offering this to the Parenting Aces community. But what we're going to do is we're going to offer for you guys, if you're interested in applying to the contest, you send an email to me, lisa at parentingaces.com. And this needs to come from the player, him or herself, not from mom and dad. So yeah. mom and dad, if you're listening, please share this with your player. We want to know what your goals are for tennis, what you love about tennis, what you're doing to work towards your goals, and why having a week at Inspiration Tennis Academy would mean something to you. And you can, again, send that to me, lisa at parentingaces.com. I need to receive it by May 1st because we need to get those names to Carly and Marson so that they can hold a spot for you for your week. It is all expenses paid while you're there, but the travel expense will be on the family of the winner. Um, but you guys, you may have some sort of way to help um, offset some of the travel costs too. Is that right, Carly? Yeah, we can always reach out to our community and see if if anybody wants to donate to that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I am so grateful again to y'all for offering this to our community. I think it's it's so generous of you and such a great opportunity for one male player and one female player to get a chance to come train with you guys down in Florida for a week this summer. Um, so if your summer plans are still, you, you don't know what you're doing yet, please have your child submit that information. All the details will be in the show notes. So if, if you don't remember what I said about what they need to send me, I'll put all of that in the show notes as well. And um, we're going to pick a boy and a girl to go spend a week with Carly and Marson this summer. Absolutely. Can't wait. It'll yeah, be we exciting. Are, we are excited. We are excited to, to, uh, for anybody to come and visit us and just kind of see what we do over there. And, and, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, we have a good group of kids and good group of coaches to, to take care of, uh, the little ones. So absolutely. Yeah. It'll be great. And the big ones. And the big ones. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. And there's so much else I wanted to talk to y'all about today, and we just have run out of time. So y'all are going to have to come back. We're going to have to yeah, dig into you. some of the other stuff um, another time. But meanwhile, thank you so much for doing this. I know it's dinner time where you guys are. We're recording in the afternoon, my time. So it's evening for you, and I want to let you get back to all the kids. Um, thank you so much for taking the time, for sharing Inspiration Tennis Academy with our community, and for your generous offer of, of this contest. And I think it's super cool. Awesome. Well, we appreciate being on Parenting Aces. Finally, we got it <laughs> when you're on your podcast. Finally. No, but <laughs> I personally love Parenting Aces and I recommend it to all of our parents and the kids when they ask me questions. I'm like, hey, there's a video for you <laughs> on Parenting Aces that'll help you out with that. And I love uh, answering questions with the community and helping them out because if I didn't have this guy here, I would not have been able to navigate tennis as a parent. And so if you I don't do anything. I yeah. don't do anything. Anyway, Lisa, thank you so yeah. very much. We thank are you. so humble and appreciate privilege to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. To my audience, thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time on Parenting Aces.